Hi everyone, my name is Tiffany Bloomhorst, the Assistant Director of the Ohio Professional Registry. I'm going to show you some new updates we have made to the employment screens in your registry profile and how to use them. I will walk you through the new screens and show you how to enter a new employment record, how to edit or remove a current record, and also what it looks like now when you do not have an employment record in your profile yet. Let's get started. First, you either need to log in or create a registry profile. Once in your profile, you will see the main landing page, and let's click on the Employment tab. Once on the Employment tab, you will see some familiar things. If you already have employment entered, you will see those employment records listed with a start, an end date, and a primary role listed. You will also still see the Edit and the Remove buttons. We will first review how to add a new employment record, and we will review how to edit and remove later on in this tutorial. To add a new employment record, you must first click the Add Employment button. Once you do so, you will immediately see the changes. We are calling this the New Employment Wizard. It will easily step you through creating a new employment record. You will see you have three categories to choose from, each with an explanation of what the category is and then some examples of the types of employment that will fall under them. The question at the top asks you, are you and then you simply select one of the three options that best describes the employment you are entering. You can select one of the following, a child care provider, employed at or funded by a state agency, or other early childhood employment. Let's first review the top record. I am a child care provider. You can see the explanation listed there states, this employment section is for professionals that work or previously worked at one of the following types of programs. Ohio Department of Job and Family Services Licensed Center, Type A or Type B Home, Ohio Department of Education Licensed Programs, Youth Development, Closed Child Care Program, Out of State Early Childhood Employment, or an After School Program. In this example, I will select the top two options to review with you. When you are creating your own records, you would just simply select which option works best for you. Once I click on the top option, I am now being taken to another screen that provides a narrowed down option of the employment type listed on the previous screen. You can see my choices now are either Ohio Department of Job and Family Services or Ohio Department of Education Licensed Program, Closed Child Care Program, After School Program, or Out of State Early Childhood Employment, or Youth Development. You can also now see that the descriptions of each employment type has also been narrowed down and provided a more detailed explanation of each. Let's review the top option first, ODJFS or ODE license programs. In this example, we have selected the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services or Ohio Department of Education license programs. Once we did that, we are now taken to a box where you can see the employment type is listed there. You are now being asked a question, which program are you with? Just like in the old employment records, you will need to know the license number of the program you are working at to ensure you are entering the records correctly. Here, you may also search by the program name as well. You simply start typing in either the program license number or the program name into the search box. You can see, as I do so, the search results are narrowed down. When you find your program name, and your program number, simply select it to move forward to creating the role information. Now as a review, since I have selected a program number, my employment type has now been narrowed down yet again. My employment type now states ODJFS Licensed Child Care Program Center. The system knows this information based on the program number I selected. It also will display the program number, the program name, and the accounting associated with it. You will also see an I icon here. It states employment type cannot be modified once roles have been added. If you need to edit the employment type, please remove this record and create a new record. This simply means that you can no longer have a back button to select a different employment type once you hit this screen. If you find out that you should have selected a different program number, you must hit the X button on the screen to start the employment type selection process over again. Now let's begin to build the role information. Since I am in the employment type of the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services Licensed Child Care Program Center, 
I will only see roles that are applicable to me in this employment type. The question now states, what role did or do you hold when you started here? There is a note here as well that states only one role can be selected. If you have multiple roles with this employer, there will be a chance to enter an additional role later. You would then simply select which role best describes your employment at this program. We know these roles will not capture every title that you have at the program, but you'll need to select the one that is the best fit for you. These are the roles that ODJFS will be using when reviewing each program at site visits. So if you need additional help, you may need to ask your administrator for assistance on which role most closely suits your responsibilities. You want to select the role that best describes you. For this example, I'm going to click on Lead Teacher. The first question in the role setup is, when did you start working at this program? You can select your start date by using the calendar on the screen. For this example, I will use today's date as my start date, and then I'll click Next. The next question is, do you still work at a role at this program? If you still work as a lead teacher at this program, then you would simply click yes. If you are entering a, a historical employment entry, you would select no and provide the end date of this record. For this example, I am still employed here. And then you click next. You will see as I make the selections, the data at the top of the role box is being captured. You see the lead teacher I selected as the role, You'll see the start date that I entered and the end date, which is currently employed. The next question you will see is how many hours a week did I or do I work at this program? You'll also see the note that states here, please enter how many hours a week you work at this employment. This information is only used for reporting purposes and a professional's individual data will never be identified or reported. Please enter the number of hours you work in this role at your program and then you click next. The next question here is how many months a year did or do you work at this program? You will notice the note here is the same, that the information gathered here is only used for reporting purposes and a professional's individual data will never be identified or reported. Please select the number of months you work at this role at your program. You will be automatically taken to the next question once you do so. The next question is, what is or was your hourly wage in this role? with the same note provided. Please enter your hourly wage for this role at the program and then click Next. The last selection you must make for some roles is the age group selection. Some roles like driver or cook will not ask you to add an age group as those roles do not have an age group assigned. Some roles like administrator will automatically populate the age group to administrator. In the lead teacher, assistant teacher, substitute, and floater roles, you will have the option to select the age groups that apply to that role. The note states to at least select at least one option. For this example, I will choose toddler and preschool and click next to move forward. You are now looking at the employment summary page. This is the final page of the employment wizard and it provides you with a screenshot of all the data you have entered so far. You can edit the role selections by clicking the edit button beside that selection if you've made an error. Let me update my age groups as I really am only the lead teacher for preschool in the mornings. Click save and it removes that information. You will also see the opportunity to add another role here. If, for example, you work as a lead teacher in one age group and an assistant teacher in another age group, you can click yes, add another role to add that role data. Let me show you what that looks like. To add another role, you will see another role box pop up. In this example, I am a lead teacher for preschool in the AM and an assistant teacher for infants in the afternoon. I will select assistant teacher here and complete the screens for this role at my program, similar to the other information I put in before. Enter the hours, select the month, enter your pay, and infants is the age group. Click next. You will now see both roles listed. You will have the option here to select which role is primary as only one role 
will display on the Employment tab within your profile. However, all will be visible when hitting the Edit button or to the funder. You will also have the option to remove a role if you entered one by mistake. So just to recap, before saving this employment record, I have two roles saved under this one employment type. The type is the program I selected at the beginning and the roles are lead teacher and assistant teacher. If I hold another role within that same program number, I would select yes, add another role to complete another entry. But in this example, we only have two roles and we'll select the no complete employment button. This final page allows you one more time to view and edit any of the information that is needed to be corrected. It will also ask you at the bottom about making this employment record the primary record. This is different than the primary role. The primary employment record is what the system will use to calculate your PD certificate requirements, so please be sure your most current and active employment is marked as primary. You will see the note here states, please review your employment details. Click on the My Primary Employment if this is your primary employment record and then click Save Employment to complete your entry. You can either do it here through the wizard or when you return to the main employment tab as it is also listed there as well. This is my primary employment record, so I'm clicking that button and you will see the check mark. Then I click Save Employment. You will see the indicator here that says my employment was saved and my record has been successfully saved to my profile. I click OK. And now I see the record that I have added in my employment tab. You will see here that I also have the option for switching between primary employment types on this screen, as mentioned earlier. We have just completed the process for adding a new employment record. The same flow and process is required for all other employment types. However, the information that is collected is much more limited. Let's quickly review the employment type of closed child care program for another example. Closed child care program, after school program, or out of state early childhood employment. You will see the information already is very different. This question asks, what is the name of your employer? As you can see, the employment type up here is listed as closed child care program, after school program, or out of state early childhood employment. All of those types are captured under this category. Here you would select the county that the employment is located in. Since I am entering an out of state employment record, I would click not in Ohio. This is an old record, so I will enter the start date. I am not there anymore. I click next. We have the option here to add another role if we would like. You will also see that the role here has already defaulted to employee. There's no reason to select any additional roles as those do not pertain to this employment type. But you'll see the employee, my start, and my end date. I don't have any other roles I need to add for this program, so I'm able to complete the employment record. This is not my primary employment as my other employment record is, so I'm able to click Save Employment and click OK. You will now see that employment record is listed in my profile as employee with a start and an end date. The same flow will work for all the other employment types, so I won't go through them all here, but you can view our resource document on our resources page for additional details on each employment type and how to complete the screens for each one. Let's quickly review an entry for a service coordinator funded by the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. Are you employed at or funded by a state agency? Which agency are you with? In this example, I'm with Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. You will see that there are examples here, Early Intervention Service Coordinator, Developmental Specialist, and DODD state agency staff. Those work for all other state agency employment types listed here as well. In this example, I'm going to click Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. Then it's asking which agency do you work for or are you are credentialed with? We know this can be very different terminologies as to what the name of your agency is. 
In this example, you would put the title of the agency that you work for in this box. Here you can see I've entered the title and then click next. You're asked which county the employment is located in and you would select a county. The common counties come up here first, however you can sort by alphabet and click one. What role did or do you hold when you started here? In this example, I am an early intervention service coordinator. So that is the role that I will select. You will see very similar information being collected here on your start date. You click next. Yes, I am still at this role. You have an option to add another role or you can complete employment as well as editing any of the information that you've already entered. I'm gonna click no, complete my employment record. This is not my primary employment, so I will not select that, and I will click Save and OK. And you will see that my service coordinator agency title is listed here with my service coordinator employment role. The system now requires every profile to have at least one employment record. I would like to show you what it looks like when you log in to your profile if you don't have any employment records saved in your profile. You will see the Add Employment Notice that states, your profile does not contain an employment record. Please create an employment record to continue in the system. You will notice that you cannot click outside the box or access anything within your OPR profile. Your only option here is to click the Add Employment button. Once you click the Add Employment button, you are taken to the beginning of the employment wizard. Let's say for whatever reason, you don't have time to enter the employment at that time or if you're choosing not to. And if you click the X to try to X out of the employment wizard, you will see a notice that pops up that says, are you sure you want to cancel? You don't have any employment records in your profile. If you cancel now, all changes will be lost and you will be logged out of the system. This is telling you that if you choose to hit yes, discard changes, you will immediately be logged out of the system. Every time that you log into your profile, you will see the same scripts that tell you that you need to enter an employment record. And if you X out, it will log you out of the profile immediately. That covers how to add a new employment record in the new employment wizard setup process. Let's quickly take a look at how to edit an existing record. First, log in to your registry profile and click on the employment tab. You will see the records that currently are in your profile listed here. However, I currently only hold one employment at the program that we entered earlier. That means that I need to end date the other records so that they reflect an end date. You can do so by clicking the edit button on the associated record. First, let's do the service coordinator record. By clicking edit, you receive the same screen that you received earlier on the summary page. This provides you the summary of the information that you had entered at a previous time, the agency name, the county, and the role information. Currently, we are trying to edit the end date, so I would click Edit. I would click No, I still do not work here, and I would provide an end date. I would select Save and Save Employment. You will now see an end date reflected in my profile. The same information is true for the JFS Test Center program. I would click Edit. You will see all of the saved information that was already here. I'm going to click Edit on Currently Employed. I'm going to select No, and I'm going to provide my end date. Save. Save Employment and my confirmation. You can now see that I only have one employment record that is current and active. It is marked my primary record, it has a start date, and the rest of my employment records have an end date. You also have the option on the screen to remove a record entirely. Let's say, for example, the information is completely wrong and you never worked at that employment location. You can click remove. Most users will not need to remove an entire record because they are able to edit the information contained within it, but you do have the option to remove it entirely. Please note, if you remove an employment record from your profile, you will lose experience points for that record, and that could potentially affect your career pathway level. This concludes the new employment entry tutorial. 
Be sure to check out our resources page for additional guidelines on each employment type and how to complete it within the new tool. Thank you.